golly. It's not an obsession, it's an addiction. It is an addiction. I mean, I started out, I started out chasing them because, you know, they were, they were uh, elusive to me. I grew up catching redfish and, and I don't, I'm not playing down redfish by any means, but I just grew up catching lots of reds. But then as I got better at it, I realized that they were true predators. They really are predators. Eyes on the upper quadrant of their head, mouth turned up, you know, big, big canines. They, they, they chase down, pursue, and kill. And I was attracted to that. Then I started seeing bigger ones and catching bigger ones and realized how, how hard it was to target that small percentage of fish. So yeah, it, became an, it became an addiction. And then it became a love affair. A four ex-wife's bad. <laughs> That's how bad it is. <laughs> that says it all right there. <laughs> it's a real sharp little you know, bump, and it just stops the bait, but it's a hollow feeling because she's taken that bait out of, off of its retrieve, and she has it in her mouth. I had a guy the other day tell me, he said, she let it go. And I said, oh, she didn't let it go, they don't have hands. They don't reach out there and grab it and put it in their mouth. They open their mouth, they suck, they pop. And you live for, you live for that. A big one feels, you never forget it. Once you've caught a really big one, you never forget that real crisp little just and it, you know it's in her mouth, you know she's got it. And the challenge is, for lots of young anglers, it's not always a challenge for me anymore because I've been doing it a long time, is to reel into that fish. The first thing is, I see something in the water, underneath the water, I see something that attracts me to that spot. And I see it before I ever get out of the boat. You saw it this morning. It was like, mm, bait line, and I see it. My feet have shown me what the bottom feels like, and I, I, I have a really good vision of that, and that's something that you can't really teach. That's something you have to just learn, and it's water time that does that. But uh, the most exciting thing for me every morning is making that cast to a specific area or a specific piece of structure knowing and believing wholeheartedly that that fish is camped there waiting to pounce. I think big, big trout are more rare than big, big snook. And that's for sure true in Texas, I think. Um, uh, and maybe probably true in, in, in some areas of Florida. Um, you know, I'm a trout guy. Everybody knows I'm a trout guy. We had a freeze this year. I'm still chasing them. We're letting them all go. My clients have been excellent about it. We have not, J. Ray hadn't killed one. I hadn't killed one. Hadn't had a client even want to kill any. It's been awesome. And that goes back to the love affair of it. That goes back to a point to where we've reached a point to where the respect and the admiration for that species is enough that we're just perfectly good with saying, not, we'd like for you not to keep them, but you're not going to, not on this boat this year. Don't have anything wrong. I don't have anything against 
the people that are are keeping them. I understand understand that there's guides out there that won't have any business if they don't. I harbor no animosity toward it at all. But for me and Jay Ray and some of my clients, this is the right path. It's the right time. It's the right path. When we started, we didn't release anything. I mean, it was, it was a, it was an ego thing, you know. Look at me. I mean, that's it. That is that is what it was. It is what it still is. And man, I I get it. I, I mean, I do. I get it. And I own it when I was in that position. And maybe you know, people would view this and say, yeah, it's real easy for you after 41 years and established clientele. You know, maybe an established name. You know. It's easy for you to say that. Well, you know, you can't, couldn't say that when you were 23 or 24. They're right. I couldn't, and I didn't, and I didn't, and and I don't. Like I said earlier, I don't. I get why people do it, but why people keep what they keep. Um, many, many, many years ago, we started with this "just keep five deal because we just said, you know, if if you know, if ten is if if ten's the limit, you know, and you've you're worried about it, you know, why wouldn't five be better and you just, just keep five? And I got a lot of ridicule for that. I mean, there, I was the guy that coined that phrase at a, at a Parks and Wildlife meeting. And I got a lot of ridicule from, not from fishermen, but from guides, from guides. as well, you know, what are you doing, you know? And you know, what I was doing was I was, I guess, unconsciously, I was in my mind every day, I would go home and I would see that pile of fillets and I would see that box of fish or that those fish dead hanging up on you know the board or hang slung over my shoulder and I would think nobody needs this much fish and then I also thought golly man if we keep doing this every day and this is what we promote every day sooner or later you know don't you think we're kind of maybe hurting them a little bit and you know, at that time the parks and wildlife this is many many years ago wasn't as much fishing pressure I think they didn't know and they were like ah you're never gonna hurt them with a rod and reel well, you know, there was, you know, 10 fishing guides, not 400. You know, there was, you know, two or three hundred people coming to Rockport a weekend to fish, not two or three thousand. Uh, boats were slower, rods weren't as sensitive, hooks weren't as sharp. Uh, lots, lots of things were different, you know, so things have changed. Now, I sit there now and I'm like, I'm like, you know, Gosh, man, you know, I've got two granddaughters and a grandson. I've got a son that's in the business. I've got lots of clients that are in the business. Are we doing the right thing? I mean, are we, are we, are we leaving anything out there for, for them? Um, and, and, and then I've realized that by promoting it that way in my mind and rationalizing it that way in my mind that I'm doing this for not just the resource, but I'm not just the people, then I realized I'm not, doesn't really have anything to do with the people. Doesn't really have to do anything with whether or not they need fish or not. We are living in a time where the resource is precious. And these fish are precious to the, to, to the trout fishery. They're precious and we can't do it this way anymore. And then I said, I cannot control what everybody else does but I damn sure can control what I do. And my choice is going to be this. And so I started off with, hey guys, let's just keep what we need. You guys don't need them, we don't keep them. You know, I would always carry my stringer. I would keep fish, you know, if they needed fish and they weren't catching them, I'd help them catch them. You know, if you need them, well, we'll help you catch them. You know, we're not, can't keep my limit, but we can keep, you know, we keep 10 or 15, you know. Then I got to where I was like, hey guys, I'm not gonna carry my stringer today. Not, I kind of learned that from Jay Ray. Really, Jay Ray was like, I'm not gonna catch it for him. And I was like, yeah, you know. He goes, you don't have anything to prove, Dad. What are, what are you trying to prove? You know, and you're getting, you're getting a, this questions leading to some core things, and and they were core with me. I was like, well, you know, what do you mean? I I, I got to prove myself every day. Well, you know what the truth is. The truth is, you don't. You know, you know, you know what you know, and I know that I'm a, a good fishing guide and a good angler. And I know that I can have the skills to teach my people to become that. So 
we started that, look, why don't we just keep what y'all need? And then we found out people were very receptive to it. And you know, I would say that the guy would say, well, you know, my wife wants me to bring home a bunch of fish. And I said, well, look, if you bring home less, you can blame it on me. He said, we just didn't catch that many. You can come back more and fish with me more. The guys were like, I like that. I like that, that a lot. You can just fish more. You know, Jay's not as good as he used to be. He's older, he, we don't catch as many, so I'm gonna have to go twice as much, you know. Anyway, it's worked out great because what we see, and you see this because you are social media orientated and the younger generation is, we see that it has caught fire. It has caught fire. And it's not the young generation that is opposed. It's my generation that's opposed. And guess whose fault that is? That's my fault. That's my fault. I created that monster. I created all that. So whose responsibility is it to fix something that they broke? It's the person that broke its responsibility. So it's my responsibility. So I feel responsible. So I'm going to, I'm going to speak what feels right for me. I'm not going to impose it and think that because you don't want to do it that way, you're wrong. I don't think that. I think it's the right path for me. You've heard me say it. And I think, you'll laugh when I say this, I think the fish know it. I think when I'm in Mansfield in the wintertime, when I'm out here like this morning, I think, there's not one doubt in that fish's mind that that guy catches me, he's gonna let me go. And then I think, I believe that because I'm doing that, I'm gonna catch another one. So it's, spiritual. it's spiritual, it's karma, it's whatever you wanna call it. And some people would say, well, it's ridiculous. Well, you know, to that person, maybe, maybe, it, maybe it is. But I know this, I know that, and I'm not, I don't think I'm Tom Brady. But I know Tom Brady has superstitions, he has things that he does. He has a work ethic that he does and he believes he's rewarded for that effort and I believe I'm rewarded for the efforts that I'm making uh, in, in helping preserve and maintain a strong trout fishery. And that's, that's, just, that's just me and, and uh, I feel good about it each day. You know, we, we looked at fish today, we talked about you know, whether their eyes were looking up or whether their eyes were looking down or whether their eyes were crossed. Well, I let one go, it winked. <laughs> I mean, it winked. <laughs> I mean, that's good stuff right there. I'm like, that's good, you know, yeah. Hadn't had a fish mounted in maybe 18 years. My best trout ever that I've caught, none of them, <laughs> none of them are mounted. They are all that go. I had a really good client with me when I caught one of the largest trout I've ever caught. And I got emotional about it. And he said that night over dinner, he said, you were emotional and I really respect it. He said, what made you emotional? And I said, well, what made me emotional was not the setting. The setting was beautiful. The setup was awesome. Uh, we predicted it was going to happen. We had caught a lot of really big fish that day already. I said, but when I let her go, I realized that I wasn't ever going to see her again, nor, nor her me. Yeah, and, 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 and people that don't it's really, really, really hard for people that have not lived the life that I've lived and been as blessed as I have been and have been so fortunate to have so many just basically world-class fish at the end of the line. You know, they, they, they don't get it. And I hope someday they do. They don't, they just don't get it. They're like, 
gosh, you know, it's a fish. I mean, it was just a really big fish. I mean, gosh, you should have just been high-fiving and slapping. Yes, we were. But our concern was snap a picture, get her back, get her, get her, you know, swim off, get her, get her gone, you know, and, and, and uh, that fish had probably never been caught before and it's probably never going to be caught again, you know, and what I hope is, I hope she swims back in that marsh and I hope she dies a peaceful life, you know, not, not to a fillet knife, you know, not to a bait lure that she swallowed too deep, but just dies of old age. And I think it's just important that we, <laughs> that we give them that opportunity. And that opportunity has to start when they're much smaller. It has to start when they're 20 inches or less. We've got to start letting that brood stock of fish go. And uh, we got a good, got a good, we got a good kickstart. A lot of people, a lot of people doing it. A lot of good things going on out there. What motivates me each day to get up and fish is, is that I know, I know that I can be better. I know that I'm not at the level that I want to be at. You know, I get, it, it drives me crazy when people use the word legend. It drives me crazy when they use the word captain. You know, I don't want to be called captain. You know, I drive a 23 foot boat that'll run in four and a half inches of water. Nobody's in danger. I'm not going to have an oil spill. I'm not coming through some jetties in the back of, you know, in the middle of the night in something that's 900 foot long and drafts 90 feet of water. That's a captain. <laughs> I'm leaving out of Cove Harbor going across, going across Estes, you know. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a guide, I'm a, you know. But um, what motivates me to get up every morning is the fact that it's still, a, it's still a chase, it's still a hunt. I've got lots of things to learn still. I think I've got lots to give. I think I've got lots to give. I think you saw that this morning, everything when I'm fishing, every little thing that happens, even when me and you were talking about something that didn't have anything to do, we're talking about your daughter, which didn't have anything to do with fishing, but I would just immediately, there was a, there was a ballyhoo, there was a needle guard that bumped right there, a fish just flipped over the top of that grass bed, I'm gonna catch a fish right there. That's what motivates me. And, and what really motivates me is the fact that I know that I have some skills to pass along to people that want that knowledge. You know, if, you, if, you're, wanting, if you're wanting to book Jay Watkins and go out and catch box fish and, and talk about how many fish you caught, then Jay Watkins can do that. But you've really wasted your day with me. You're a whole lot better off saying, pick, picking something specific and saying, could you show me how to do this? Could you, you know, enlighten me on why you think this? Then there's the value. In, in what I have to give because I've been out there 41 years. I've seen, I've seen red tide, brown tide, blue green algae, freezes, multiple ones, droughts, multiple ones, hurricanes, multiple ones, uh, boats that go fast, boats that go shallow, rods that, I've seen everything. I've seen everything. There's gonna be some more stuff I haven't seen, I haven't, that I haven't seen, uh, that I'm gonna have to adapt to, you know? And, and so uh, that motivates me, that motivates me. I hope that one day I cast and it's my last breath. And they find me right there. That's about it. Well, I mean, obviously I'm proudest of my boys. I mean, I am, I'm proudest of my boys. Um, you know, I didn't always do things right. I wasn't always the best example or a role model to them, but I took them fishing. I took them in the outdoors. I think they both have great appreciation for the outdoors, I think that I think that it it grounded them uh, from a standpoint of nature is not forgiving. Uh, it's brutal sometimes. You don't always win every day when you fish. You don't always catch them. You don't always see the deer of a lifetime. You don't ever duck you shoot at. You don't kill uh, every tournament you fish. You don't win. Um, it has its ups and downs and it prepares you for life because life's that way. Life will reach up and slap you in the face. And 
what fishing has taught my boys, and I think there's probably people who think it's a crude example, but what it's taught them is taught them to get up. You know, it's taught them to get up. And we need more get up in the world. We need more people that get knocked down and have a support system around them that says, get up. You know, dust yourself off, get up. Um, two examples, me and Jay Ray, and I always feel bad about the fact that me and Jay Ray got to fish so many tournaments together and me and Ryan did not. Ryan was off doing his own thing. He was in college, he was getting a degree, he was winning national championships bass fishing and it's been awesome for him. Me and Jay Ray were winning some tournaments down here, but the best, the best experiences that me and Jay Ray ever had, the most learning experience that Jay Ray ever had was losing tournaments with me. Was losing with this hero, you know? It taught, mm -hmm. <clears throat> it taught him to get up. We stood in front of God and our, and our clients and our family and we zeroed in our hometown. And it was embarrassing and it was humiliating. And it taught him to get up. When Ryan lost, when Ryan won the national championship and the next day, they surprised the two college winners of the national championship with a small lake and competition between two guys that had fished together their whole lives, their whole college careers. You guys are posed against you. Guess what? The winner goes to the Bass Master Classic. And Ryan lost by half a pound. And he calls me in the truck. He's balling. And I told him, I said, you have to get up. And I said, you have to get up. This loss does not define you. And it didn't. It didn't. It didn't. So what is, what is, what is fishing taught my boys? He's taught me to get up. What am I proud of? I'm proud of my boys. Uh, what, I, what I want to be remembered as? I would like to be remembered as a good guy, a better than average fisherman, a good dad, a good coach, uh, a good son, a uh, good husband. Um, there's four that would <laughs> that would dispute that that last one but maybe I finally got one that won't <laughs> anyway but yeah you have to you always have to add a little humor here just to kind of get us to recover a little bit <laughs>